Okay, children. Uh, we'll begin today's class because it's already past two thirty. Uh, if you try to recollect what we did in the last class, that is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That is what we did, and in that I I had touched hybridization. I had used the word hybridization there because we said, and I explained also because we said that the geometry of the methane molecule which is the simplest uh, hydrocarbon that we know it has a regular tetrahedral structure it is not that one of its bond is you know short and the other three are of equal length or anything like it we said that this was possible only because it undergoes a phenomenon which is called as hybridization and as a result of which uh, four hybrid orbitals are obtained which are uh, which are of equal energy, which are of equal bond length, and they also have the same bond strength, whereby which all the four bonds in the case of methane molecule is same, and therefore it has a regular tetrahedral structure. So today we will be discussing hybridization. First, we will start with S and P orbitals. In the case of hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and then we'll do the next part where we will be involving the n minus 1d orbitals or the nd orbitals, depending upon whether the hybridization is going to be dsp2 or dsp3 or whether it is going to be sp3d. You see, the where the d is placed, that will actually tell you which d orbital is getting involved. All right. So I think we'll start with the hybridization and uh, of snp orbitals. And for that, uh, we will start actually considering from uh, the carbon atom. Okay. For that, I think I'll use the whiteboard. It will be easy for me to explain in that case. Mm, let us see where is the whiteboard. Okay, here we go. All right. So in this case, we said, where is the need for hybridization? Why should this process of hybridization occur? It is more of a theoretical process. Nobody gets to ever see that, okay, uh, you know, hybridization is happening. Nobody gets to see that. But what, I'm, what we are saying here is that where is the need for hybridization? Now, before you do uh, hybridization right from standard uh, lower sections of so lower classes you have studied, that the bonds are formed, then there is a valence bond theory that we talk about, okay, how the uh, atoms are uh, combining to form the bonds. Like for example, if we are talking about, um, let us say uh, nitrogen to form N2 molecule. Let us say we are talking about nitrogen to form the N2 molecule. So what we study in this case is that nitrogen, which is having an atomic number of seven has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. All right, 2p3. If we draw the box diagram, then for 2s2, it will be like this. And for 2p3, it is going to be 1, 2, and 3. And each one of them is going to have one electron each. This is 2s2, this is px, 2px, 2py, and this is going to be 2pz. Okay, now they are all having one electron each. So if I'm talking about the formation of N2 molecule, let us say Na atom and Nb. A and B are just representing that they are two different atoms of the same element. Okay, so if this one is A, then even B will have the same kind of electronic configuration, atomic number being the same. It will also have 1s2 and it will also have the box diagram like this of 2s2 having two electrons and 2p3 having one electron each. So this is how it will go. So according to the valence bond theory, it tells you that the unpaired electrons, they will pair up to form the N2 molecule. So in this case, you can see the pairing will occur one here, another one here, and the third one here. And therefore we say that since these unpaired electrons are pairing up, we get a molecule of nitrogen, which is represented with a triple bond. Okay, so, so far good. Okay, now suppose if you are talking about, uh, let us say, a molecule of oxygen. In the case of oxygen molecule, what will happen? In the case of oxygen molecule, the atomic number is eight. 
So if I'm talking about the oxygen molecule, let me see, I'll use a yellow for oxygen. This is oxygen A. This is having 1s2 and the outer shell electronic configuration is two electrons. And then you have the 2p, 2p there are three orbitals, px, py, and pz. And since this is having eight number, its atomic number is eight. So its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, four. So if this is 2p, four, then obviously in this case, you have one electron first occupying singly, and then the pairing starts. So in one oxygen atom, there are two unpaired electrons. And if I'm taking another oxygen atom, again, in this case, this atom, this is going to have two unpaired electrons, and then they are going to show pairing. And therefore, when they show pairing, what will happen? One pair is going to be here, and the other pair is going to be here. These electrons are missing, so they have to be here. All right, so they will pair up. And you see, since two electrons each from oxygen atoms are pairing up, the molecule of oxygen has a double bond like this. Similarly, in the case of halogens, since their atomic, the outermost shell has seven electrons, so they have one unpaired electron, and therefore their electronic uh, configuration has one unpaired electron, and therefore it forms a single bond between two. So, so far it was okay to explain that this is what is happening. If I consider the same thing for carbon atom, if I consider the same thing for carbon atom, then carbon atom atomic number is six and its electronic configuration is one is two. This changed color. Okay, it is one is two, then it becomes two is two and then it becomes two P two. Now, if I go with the box diagram, this is going to have a pair of electron and the 2p is going to have, uh, because they are degenerate orbitals, each one will take one electron, and this is how it should be. So in the case of carbon, it should have two unpaired electrons. So whether it is combining with the same atom or whether they are combining with different atoms, like suppose if I'm talking about HCl, then in the case of HCl, one atom, of, one electron of hydrogen and one in unpaired electron of chlorine are combining to form the bond, that is the covalent bond. So in that case, carbon should have shown a valency, uh, valency of two, covalency of two, because it is having two unpaired electrons. But this is not the case. Why? Because the, of the phenomena of hybridization, where it tells you that the unpairing of the 2s2 electron will occur, and it will give rise to four numbers of sp3 hybrid orbitals. All right, so what are these four number of sp3 hybrid orbitals? What is uh, uh, this phenomena and why it is happening? That part we have understood, but now we will understand the different kinds that are there. That is sp3, sp2, sp, sp2, and so on. So before we proceed, we must know the rules for hybridization. We cannot say that, okay, you know, hybridization has taken place here or uh, anywhere in the atom or anywhere in the molecule, no. Hybridization is going to happen within the atom. It will never be between two atoms, all right? See, the atomic orbitals of a single atom, atomic orbitals belonging to a single atom will undergo hybridization. So that is rule number one, all right? Because what is the, what is the important thing to remember? That orbitals of a single atom will undergo the process of intermixing to give rise to hybrid orbitals. Now, can a 2s you know, undergo intermixing with a 4s or can a 2s undergo intermixing with uh, you know, a 3d or a 5f? No, the orbitals which are undergoing hybridization, they should be almost equivalent in energy. I am using the word almost equivalent, meaning the difference in their energies should not be large. That is, they should be of comparable energy. All these words, you know, you can understand. Comparable means almost the same. So it is not that there is a large difference in their energy. So those atomic orbitals which show, which have comparable energy, which show very little difference in their energies, they are the ones which will undergo um, what you say, the process of hybridization. All right. So the energies of the combining atoms or the combining orbitals 
should be comparable. So energies have to be, energies are comparable. This is the next point that you can remember in the rules of hybridization. Then the third point for the rules of hybridization, the number of hybrid orbitals obtained, number of hybrid orbitals obtained, how many will they be? It is simple to understand that as many number of atomic orbitals get involved in the formation of hybrid orbitals, those many number of hybrid orbitals will be obtained. If four numbers of, if a total of four numbers of atomic orbitals of comparable energy are getting involved in the hybridization process, then four number of S, I mean, four number of hybrid orbitals will be obtained. Why? Because these orbitals of comparable energy will redistribute their energies in such a way that the four or the as many number of atomic orbitals that are obtained, four in the case of sp3, they will all be of almost of the same energy and they will be the number involved is going to be the same. Now, does this mean that the electrons also get involved in hybridization? No. Electrons are not getting involved. Electrons are electrons. They are in their own identity. There is no change in the electrons because they are fundamental particles. They will not undergo any change. Yes, one thing is for sure that the filling up of the electrons in these orbitals will happen just like it happens in the case of pure orbitals. Now I'm using two words here. One is pure orbitals, one is hybrid orbitals. So what are hybrid orbitals? Those orbitals which are uh, formed due to redistribution of energy, redistribution of their shapes, all right? And that is how the hybrid orbitals are obtained. And, uh, the okay, I forgot to write the fourth point. So let us write the fourth point here. The electrons do not, electrons are not affected. All right, electrons are not affected by the uh, process of hybridization. All right. And the ne next thing, the last, probably the most important thing to understand is that when the hybridization occurs, those orbitals which have more dominating directions, okay, dominating directions means, suppose if you're talking about a spherical orbital and you are talking about a dumbbell orbital like a p orbital when they undergo intermixing some part of s will get into p but it is not that the p orbitals change into spherical shape so the ones which are dominating in their shape the ones which are having a definite direction in their shape that is the tendency of the atomic orbitals to attain all right so there are about four or five rules uh, in all the books it is given what are the rules and what we have to remember is that orbitals of a single atom will undergo hybridization. You cannot have an atom of uh, one oxygen atom uh, involving its 2s orbital and another oxygen involving its 2p orbitals to undergo oxidation. No. We, uh, to undergo hybridization. No. It is the atomic orbitals of the single atom. Usually, if you look into the hybridization, you will understand that usually those orbitals which are close to each other, all right, and the d orbitals which overlap, okay, these are the ones which are uh, showing hybridization or which undergo the process of intermixing to result in hybrid orbitals, okay. So it is intermixing of atomic orbitals of comparable energies to form the same number of hybrid orbitals as the number of orbitals undergoing hybridization. So this is uh, what you're supposed to know about the phenomena of hybridization. The next thing that we will take up is the types of hybridization. Now coming to the types here, uh, hybridization is intermixing. There is no type of uh, mixing as such, but what kind of hybrid orbitals we can get? All right, involving S and P orbitals as of now. Then when we do D orbitals, then we will talk about that, okay. All right, S and P. The first one that we will study is SP3 hybrid orbitals. Okay, this you did yesterday also. You have SP3 hybrid orbitals. 
and the example that we will study is of carbon. So what happens in the case of carbon? We did yesterday, we did just now also, that carbon with atomic number six has electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Representing in the box diagram, two electrons are here and 2p, there are three. So each, each one, I mean, the two electrons get into one orbital each. Okay, now, if you look into this, uh, the structure, then if it is getting into the excited state and it decides to undergo hybridization, then what will be the result? All these will undergo hybridization and they will all be under one line now because they are now equal in energy and bond length and bond strength and they will each have one electron. Okay. So one number of S orbital one number quantity I'm talking about. I'm not talking about two S. I'm not talking about the, uh, the shell number. I'm talking about one number of S orbital. Okay, one number of S orbital, which is spherical in shape, plus three numbers of P orbitals. So the P orbitals are like this. So three numbers of P orbitals will undergo intermixing and result in the formation of sp3 hybrid orbitals, which will have uh, what you can say is that the, the shape of the p orbitals will become little changed. What changes will occur? Since this is 25%, if I am talking about four atomic orbitals undergoing the hybridization phenomena, s is 25% and three numbers of p, they contribute 75% of their character. So the hybrid orbital that will be obtained will be fatter or you can say thicker and shorter than the pure P orbitals. Some amount of that spherical nature has gone into the P orbitals. Now you must recollect that S orbitals are definitely, uh, they have shorter uh, bond lengths or they are, they are closer to the nuclei, the distance is going to be less. But the P orbitals are, you know, thrown outwards and therefore they are dumbbell shaped. So obviously their bond length, the bonds that they form, their bond lengths will be more. So in this case, what will happen is little amount, a part of that S character will uh, get mixed up with the pure P orbitals resulting in the formation of a slightly thicker or fatter and shorter sp3 hybrid orbitals so you can understand that they will be slightly thicker and shorter than the sp3 hybrid orbitals all right so this is once this has been obtained four numbers of these are obtained then they will orient themselves at equal distance from each other and a regular tetrahedral structure of the carbon atom will be obtained this is sp3 hybridization now is it always carbon has to show sp3 hybridization will it always be like that no because it depends the hybridization will depend on how many number of s and p are undergoing now only p cannot undergo hybridization because they are the, the three p are themselves what they are they are degenerate only when there is some other uh, uh, orbital which is mixing with them will it result in hybridization so s for all the shells is always one you have just one number of s orbitals so usually the contribution of the s orbital is one but out of the three p orbitals either all the three will participate or two will participate or one will participate in hybridization. Let us see if this is sp3, let us go to what is sp2 hybridization then. Okay, so now we will be discussing sp2 hybridization. What is sp2 hybridization? Now, we will again take the example of carbon atom. Okay, so carbon atom, atomic number 6, 1s2 and outermost electronic configuration, 2s2 and you have 2p2 one each electron in the px, py or orbitals and this is how it, it, it is. Now, when this is ready to show sp2 hybridization, 
then what will happen? It means that there is one number of S and two numbers of P orbitals that have to undergo intermixing. So when the hybridization process occurs, what will happen is three numbers of hybrid orbitals will be obtained. Okay, let me show this in, uh, okay, let me write this one here. Okay, this is one, two, uh, three, and four. So here in this case, three will be filled up here, one, two, and three. And though there has been an unpairing, okay, I forgot to show one more step here. You can show that from 2s2, there is an unpairing and one electron is left here. This is what happens. Each one will get one electron. And after that, this will undergo intermixing. Okay. So when this undergoes intermixing, what you are getting is, okay, let me show the hybrid orbitals with the market blue. So these are the hybrid orbitals that you are getting. Okay. And they are having one electron each and a pure P orbital will be left out. I mean, they, it will not undergo hybridization. So this is a pure P orbital, pure P orbital. Why does the word pure come here? Because we are discussing hybridization, hybrid orbitals. These three orbitals are sp2 hybridized orbitals okay now check how many orbitals underwent mixing one number of s okay one number of s and two numbers of p orbitals two numbers of p orbitals underwent intermixing in this case what is the percentage of s how much is s contributing to the three numbers of sp2 hybrid orbitals that we are getting three numbers we will get right because one s and two numbers of p orbitals are undergoing hybridization so it gives rise to three number of sp2 hybrid orbitals definitely they will be much more thicker okay this hasn't come out very thick uh, they will be much more thicker than the orbitals of the sp3 why because the s character in this case is how much the S character in this case is 33%. Actually, it goes 33.3% and so on. Okay. And the P character is how much? 66.6% 6 and so on. Okay. So, amount of S character has increased. Now, if the percentage of S character is increasing, then obviously, the bonds are shorter and fatter. Okay, then the sp3 hybrid orbitals, which in turn are shorter and fatter than the pure p orbitals due to the contribution of s character. And therefore, in the case of sp2 hybrid orbitals, you have double bonds there. Okay, now uh, the double bonds are not because uh, of the shorter bond length or so, but what happens is that the pure p orbitals cannot be just left out. They have one unpaired electron each. So it just cannot be left out. So they undergo what you call as the pi bond formation. Okay. So what will the atom look like if I'm talking about a carbon atom? Then it is going to have three numbers of hybridized orbitals. These are three numbers of sp2 hybrid orbital. In the case of sp3 hybridization, the orientation like we had discussed yesterday, the bond angle was 109.28 degrees and they were all at equidistance from each other. In this case also, the three sp2 hybrid orbitals, they will be at equidistance from each other and the bond angle is 120 degrees. Okay, now obviously this carbon cannot remain like this. You know, you cannot have a molecule of carbon with only three hydrogen atoms. What happens to the fourth pure P orbital? So it has to combine with another carbon atom and this another carbon atom will also have its uh, bonds directed at, at an angle of 120 from each other. And the P orbital, the pure P orbital that we are talking about. Let me show you the pure 
P orbital um, in uh, green. Okay. So in this case, what will happen is that the pure P orbitals are like this. Okay. In both of them, there is one pure P orbital. Both the carbon atoms are now coming together because you cannot show double bond between when you have a compound of only one carbon atom. You need at least two carbon atoms to show the double bond. So the double bond that is being formed is containing now two kinds of bonds. What are those two kinds of bonds? One is the sigma bond and the other one is the pi bond. Hybrid orbitals will always undergo sigma bonding. Unhybridized orbitals will undergo pi bonding because pi bonding is the sideways overlap. Okay, it is the sideways overlap of the uh, p orbitals. After completing sp, I will come to this also. I don't know if we did this in the previous classes or not. Uh, if you tell me, then maybe if you have not done, we can do it. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to tell you. Then there is a sideways overlapping and the lobes of the p orbital which are directed above and below the plane in which the sigma bond is or the linear line along which the sigma bond is, then that results in the formation of pi bonds. One more thing you can understand here that due to the shorter bond length, the p orbitals lobes of the pure p orbitals are able to overlap. In a way, it is facilitating the overlapping, the sidewise overlapping of the P orbitals. Okay. And this kind of a hybridization is called as sp2 hybridization. Where is this kind of hybridization seen? It is seen in the case of uh, what you call uh, alkenes, like you studied in standard 10, ethene, propene, those carbon atoms which are having the double bond, okay, which have the double bond, they are sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. They are sp2 hybridized carbon atoms the carbon which is having only single bonds they are sp3 hybridized carbon atoms okay so if this was sp2 hybridization then what is sp hybridization what is sp hybridization to know that we will again have to go to another uh, compound which is called as ethyne where you have c triple bond c where again if we are going to study the sp hybridization then let us go with let us say we are doing sp hybridization then what is happening in this case then what is going to happen in this case that we have to understand now if i am talking about sp hybridization in the case of sp hybridization carbon atom again electronic configuration 6 then it's going to be 2s2, two electrons, 2p, it is going to combine, each is going to have one electron, then it will go into the excited state and one electron from 2s will jump and go to 2p, okay? And then only these two will undergo hybridization. That is one number of s, all right? And one number of p orbitals. 2p I am writing because they are the second shell p orbitals. But if I go with the quantity, one number of s orbital and two numbers of and one number of 2p orbitals, they are undergoing intermixing and resulting in the formation of sp hybrid orbitals. And when they form the sp hybrid orbitals, then they have to orient themselves because now these two sp hybrid orbitals are now of equal energy. All right, and they will orient themselves at the maximum distance that is possible and it comes to 180 degrees and the two pure P orbitals are left out. Okay, they are both containing one electron each. Now what happens in this case, how will the bond formation take place? In this case, what happens is, again, you will need at least another carbon atom to show the sp hybridization and in this case what happens is one carbon and one carbon okay the red ones are hybridized orbitals this is h and this is h they will be 
the hybridized orbitals are you see at 180 degrees from each other okay linear shape it is becoming linear so this is becoming like this and the okay i should have shown this with the blue so let me show the hybridized orbitals with the blue okay one second let me show the hybridized orbitals with the blue you see these are hybridized orbitals okay now since there are two carbon atoms we are able to show this if i take only one carbon atom it will not be possible so you will say that there are only two uh, sp hybrid orbitals here then how come we are showing three three because two carbon atoms are combining this is basically one of this sub one and the other one is of this one so they are combining to form a sigma bond okay this is a sigma bond and this is a sigma bond what happens to the pure p orbitals the pure p orbitals that are there which we are going to show in red are like this okay and the other one is also having one like this and there are two sets of pure p orbitals so one i'm showing in red and one i'm going to show in green which is going to be like this that means they are 90 degrees to each other and they are 90 degrees to the line along which the bond is being formed the sigma bond is being formed so this gives rise to what that there is going to be a pairing here all right and there is going to be overlapping i mean and there is going to be overlapping here and here and there is going to be overlapping between the green orbitals also so actually if you try to look at this it it looks like you know it's all mixed up but actually what is happening is that in this case a carbon atom if i have to a carbon atom is like this okay and it is having two hydrogens attached to it and there are going to be again i did that in red it should have been in blue but anyway so in this case then the these are going to be the these are the two pi orbitals that are formed so this is the pi orbital and these are the sigma uh, pi bond sorry and these are the sigma bonds okay so you see that for the same carbon atom we have shown three kinds of hybridization what are those three kinds of hybridization sp3 sp2 and sp how does the shape of the molecule change when the hybridization is shown like this the shape in the case of sp3 hybridized carbon atom was a regular tetrahedron the shape in the case of it it was a three dimensional structure in the case of sp3 when you come to sp2 it kind of becomes a two dimensional structure because it's a more of a planar structure and when you come to sp hybridization it becomes more of a linear structure straight line structure okay now i need to also discuss with you how the sigma and the pi bonds are formed okay so let's go to the next page and see how the sigma and the pi bonds are formed if i am talking about sigma bond the sigma bond is always along the nuclear axis okay what does the nuclear axis mean that suppose if these are the two atoms combining atoms okay when the sigma bond is formed then the bond will be along the internuclear axis this means if i am taking the case of hydrogen molecule then the two s are going to the two one s orbitals are going to overlap like this and the overlapping is along the internuclear distance this is a sigma bond this is a sigma bond okay now if i am talking about let us say chlorine and chlorine molecule i mean cl and cl2 then in this case also it is the two p orbitals which are if you go by the electronic configuration then chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell whereby which one of the electron is unpaired all right there also the p and the p orbitals are supposed to overlap and this is also if it is overlapping like this and th this is the nucleus you see the overlapping is at the on the internuclear distance along the internuclear axis all right 
always the sigma bonding always will be stronger because the overlapping is going to be more whether it is between s and s whether it is between p and p or whether it is between s and p suppose if i take the example of hcl okay i take the example of hcl in the case of hcl one of hydrogen all right and chlorine p orbital will undergo overlapping but again this is along the internuclear axis so the overlapping will always be more whenever the bonding occurs along the internuclear axis it is called as the sigma bond okay it can happen uh, all the hybrid orbitals whenever they are formed they show sigma bonding those orbitals which are left like the p orbitals pure p orbitals they will show pi bonding now what is pi bonding pi bonding will always result due to the side wise overlapping this kind of a overlapping is called as head to head overlapping or you know head to head or head to tail overlapping whatever but it means that it is along the same axis in which the nucleus are lying okay now if i take the case of methane molecule i have you know four bonds which are all sigma bonds if they are all sigma bonds then how is it happening because you see the overlapping along this hydrogen one let us let me take this to be hydrogen one and this is carbon then in this case the nucleus of this is here and the nucleus of this is here the overlapping is along the nuclear axis in this case also the overlapping is along the internuclear axis so you see that the overlapping happens along the internuclear axis and therefore the overlapping is more these bonds are stronger but then what is a pi bond in the case of pi bond what happens is that the pure p orbitals like we said in the previous hybridization that they undergo intermixing uh, the hybrid orbitals undergo intermixing the orbitals which are left out are the pure orbitals they are going to overlap sidewise now the p orbitals will overlap sidewise okay this is what it means okay with the blue i am showing the covalent the sigma bond which has already been formed between the two atoms okay this is the sigma bond which has already been formed along the two atoms these pi orbitals are at 90 degrees to the 90 degrees to the covalent bond which has been formed due to head to head overlapping i mean this bonding has already occurred this is the first bond to happen without the sigma bonds pi bonds cannot happen but you can have only a sigma bond but you cannot have only a pi bond so the first bond that will be established is always a sigma bond so you get a sigma bond in blue and in red you have the pi bonds which are going to overlap sidewise their lobes are going to overlap sidewise and therefore the overlapping is not that effective and therefore the pi bonds are uh, which are at 90 degrees to the main bond that has been formed the sigma bond that has been formed they are more uh, you can say exposed they are um, slightly away from the nucleus and therefore they undergo reactions very easily that is why they undergo addition reactions and the bond breaks easily the pi bonds will rupture easily but to break the sigma bonds you require more energy okay so this is what is happening in the case of double bond there is one single bond and you have another bond which is you know kind of you know surrounding this there is one lobe which is above it and one lobe which is below it and this is how the pi bonds are happening though i am showing the lobes above and below like this it doesn't mean that there are two bonds it's only one bond one pair of electrons are getting involved and it is one bond if there is a triple bond in the same situation if there is a triple bond then if this is the sigma bond which has formed okay due to the hybridized orbitals they will always be dumbbell because the spherical nature is actually lost and it is the dumbbell shape that is obtained 
the p orbitals one set of p orbitals as we discussed just now let me show this is the nucleus okay this is the nucleus and one set of p orbitals are overlapping like this okay one set of p orbitals are overlapping like this it is 90 degrees that means if this is the covalent bond first uh, sigma bond formed then the pi bond is at 90 degrees the third set of bond that is formed which is going to be of another set of pure p orbitals that will be at 90 degrees to both of them all right so this one is going to extend like this so this bond which has been formed in blue is the internuclear distance along the internuclear distance and internuclear axis whereas the other two bonds are at 90 degrees to each other and 90 degrees to the bond that has been formed due to uh, head to head overlapping that is the sigma bond so you have a pi bond here one sigma bond another sigma bond and such a kind of a bond formation that is seen in the case of a molecule this is called as a uh, triple bond the bonds formed a triple bond one sigma and two pi and it is always a result of the sp hybridized molecule and the sp hybridized molecules are linear in shape that part of the molecule will be linear in shape let us see now in standard 10 you had done butane okay you have done butane butene butyne you know i hope you know what are these okay so i'll just take one example to explain one thing here this is one carbon all right then there is a double bond and then there is let us say one carbon and there is a triple bond okay so this is having one hydrogen this will have one hydrogen this carbon will not have any hydrogen and this has one hydrogen now you see this part of the molecule this carbon atom is sp3 hybridized okay why because it has four single bonds these two okay are sp2 hybridized you cannot have one carbon atom sp2 hybridized you need to have at least two carbon atoms to show the double bond hence it is sp2 hybridized followed and these two carbon atoms are sp hybridized this part of the molecule will show a regular tetrahedral shape all right this part of the molecule will be showing a tetrahedral structure this part of the molecule will be showing a planar structure whereas this part of the molecule will be a linear structure will be showing a linear structure okay so this is how the hybridization affects the 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 you can say the geometry of the compounds also how they will be arranged uh, in uh, how they will be you know whether the there will be any rotation or not if there is a single bond the comp, the carbon atoms rotate along that sigma bond but the minute you have a pi bond that rotation is stopped it cannot undergo that rotation followed so this is what you have to do about you have to learn about hybridization now before uh, we move into the d orbitals let me show you some more diagrams regarding this because those pictorial representations are always uh, more easy to understand so let me see now one second okay i'll go back to that i'll close the whiteboard and i'll just try to take out some pictures and show you that i have saved okay mm -hmm. just a few pictorial representations that i got to show you all right here we go you see, uh, not this one. You see, this is SP hybridization. One second. Let's go to SP3. See, this is SP3 hybridization. You see that in the books, you will see that the lobes have been represented. One of the lobes is a larger one. The other one is a smaller one. Usually, the smaller lobe is away from your, uh, from your eyes, uh, from the side you are looking at. Okay. So, there is one number of S 
three numbers of p orbitals along the three different axes x y and z and it is giving four number of hybrid orbitals each bond is having 25% s character 75% p character okay this is about sp3 hybridized orbitals let us see the next one in this case you see all the three have been shown in this case all the three have been shown you have an s orbital you have three numbers of px py pz giving rise to sp3 hybridized orbitals then in the second case there is one number of s and two numbers of p orbitals giving rise to sp2 hybridized orbitals which are trigonal planar in shape this is tetrahedral in shape okay and then you have the third kind which is sp uh, hybridized orbital usually the y axis is taken because it falls on along the internuclear axis and you will find that it is linear in shape you see this here it is saying it is linear in shape all right so sp hybridized orbitals linear in shape so the three different shapes are decided accordingly now let's go to one more picture i have to show you okay that was the first one this is sp hybridization all right s orbital and p orbital they have done a very good color combination when you add a little blue to the pink it kind of shows a purple color so that is the why they have shown the hybridized orbitals with a little purple color and you see two numbers of sp hybrid orbitals are seen and you can see that these two numbers that are there okay these two numbers that are there are if this is the nucleus of that atom you see it is directed one this side and the other this side see every hybridized orbital is going to have two lobes even the pure p orbital has two lobes so how does the overlapping happen the lobes and lobes will overlap in the case of uh, sigma bonding but in the case of pi bonding it's going to be sidewise okay so when this is overlapping one overlapping here and the other one overlapping from this side then this results in a structure which is like this or you can say the geometry is like shown here okay so these were a couple of uh, diagrams i wanted to show you and uh, then we also have to do the uh, what we say we also have to do the dsp2 and the sp3d orbitals also which i think i can take take up in the next class because your time is already crossed 10 minutes more and uh, any any other questions you have to ask any questions you have to ask children did you understand hybridization i want yes, at ma. least one or two of you to yes, reply yes ma'am yes ma'am okay because it's not a difficult topic at all the only thing is you have to you while it is being explained if you can actually visualize you will get a correct uh, idea about the hybridization all right so i think this uh, this should be fine and uh, maybe in the next class i will start with the d part and from the d hybridization the dsp2 dsp3 and all that then we will move on to the next part of the chapter that is molecular orbital theory okay and uh, i think i'll have to start taking some extra classes children because this is not going to suffice but uh, anyway let me see what i can do okay yes miss all right so should i now uh, end the class here okay you have the next class lined up so that is it okay thank you miss thank you miss